Let us now attempt to write the same program, this time using a different strategy to use generative AI. I'm going to use my IDE, my integrated development environment. On this system, my IDE is Visual Studio Code. Now, as part of that IDE, I have installed an extension to use generative AI. That extension is GitHub Copilot. So let's head over to the IDE, Visual Studio Code, where I have created a blank program file. This file for now has got the name temp.py. So in here, uh, I'm getting a prompt that says type something or ask GitHub Copilot to do something interesting. So let me prompt my GitHub Copilot to write a similar program for me. So I'm going to start by writing a comment, starting with the hash symbol. So I will say write a Python program. And you can see that as I am typing, my generative AI is making suggestions. Now, it is making a suggestion that is not interesting to me, so I'm going to ignore it. I'm just going to continue typing. Write a Python program to convert a given, uh, now again, it's making some suggestion. I don't like this. Uh, I also don't like the fact that my comment is becoming quite long. I'm going to go to the next line to convert, uh, and you notice that uh, it is helpfully continuing my comment because it realizes I haven't yet finished. So I will accept some of this. I will say uh, convert a given temperature um, in Celsius. And now I like its suggestion. It's saying convert a given temperature in Celsius to Fahrenheit. How did it know that I wanted to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit? Well, it can see what I have typed so far, converting a temperature in CEL, cell, and it says, well, what's the most likely completion of this uh, statement? And it knows that many people, when they're beginners, they write this kind of a program to convert temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So it's made an educated guess. Since I like this suggestion, I'm no longer going to type it. I'm just going to hit the tab key on my keyboard to accept this. And this part of the comment is written for me. Now I'm going to press enter and I'm going to write some code. My generative AI is suggesting that I might want to write a function here, very similar to what uh, my chat GPT had suggested. But I don't want to write a function. I haven't yet learned how to write a function. So in my mind, the steps of my program are very clear. Step one, I want to read a temperature from the user. Step two, I want to apply my formula. And step three, I want to print the answer out. So I'm going to completely ignore my generative AI's suggestion. I'm going to write another comment here. Step one, OK? And before I have even written that, my generative AI has made a suggestion. Step one, get the temperature in Celsius. Yes, I like that suggestion very much. Right? Maybe I want to just add uh, from the user, ah, perfect. Thank you, generative AI, for reading my mind. Sometimes the way the generative AI reads your mind is a little bit uh, scary. But let's accept this. Just press tab and press and enter. And now we see some familiar code. It has chosen a sensible variable name on the left-hand side of the assignment, Celsius. And on the right-hand side, it has used the nested function call to both read the input from the user and to convert it, or as we sometimes say, cast it into a float. So I'm just going to press tab to accept that. Notice that so far I haven't written any code. I've just been writing English statements explaining my intent. So step one seems to be done. Right, now what about step two? What did we say? Even before we've had a chance to think about what we um, wanted to do, our generative AI has suggested what to do. Convert that temperature to Fahrenheit. Very good. Let's 
tab on that and let's do that. The formula is something that uh, our AI can easily recall. Uh, we just accept it. Of course, we should verify that that is the correct formula. Celsius times 1.8, 9 divided by 5 is the same as 1.8. Please note that our generative AI has used true division. If for some reason the suggestion was 9 slash slash 5 with uh, floor division, that would be an error. But our AI is smart enough, it has done step 2. Now can it suggest step 3? Display the result. Very good. Let's go ahead and display the result. And it says print temperature in Fahrenheit colon Fahrenheit. So what's going on here? And it's got a comma in between. This is not using the F string format. So let's just accept it. Uh, and then it's also suggesting the closing bracket. I'm rather surprised it didn't suggest all of that at once, but it's done this. This turns out to be another way of printing. By using the comma, you can concatenate different parts of the string. The difference between a comma and a plus is by default the comma will actually put a space between the things that you are concatenating. I actually usually don't like using this older style. Uh, when I'm printing some statement like this along with some expression or a variable, I really like F strings. So I'm actually going to rethink this. I'm going to go away with all this and I'm going to try and prompt my generative AI that I really would like it to use the F string format. So I'll just type the F and notice that it has made a suggestion here. I really like the suggestion because it's even put the little degree symbol uh, on it. So let me tab on that. Print so many degrees C is equal to so much Fahrenheit. So this is very, very informative. So I really like this. Let me go ahead and save this file. I can either go over here in my IDE and click on save or there is a keyboard shortcut control S. So in the future I will use keyboard shortcuts when I know them. So now my code is saved. This file, this sequence of steps has been saved as a Python program on my system. Now because I have installed Python on my system, I have a little play button up here on the right that lets me run or execute any Python program. Let's see if that actually works. I will click on this play button and it will run and you can see it says enter temperature in Celsius. So let me go ahead and enter 100. Right? Now please notice I have typed 100 not 100.0. So what will happen here? This will be read as a string and then that string will be converted to a float which is 100.0 and then it will do the conversion. So when I press enter, all that happens and it prints 100.0 degrees Celsius is equal to 212.0 degrees Fahrenheit. I can run this program again uh, by, by going up to the play button or now that I'm here in this portion of my system, this is called the terminal and here I can issue various commands. I can also press the up arrow key inside the terminal and that will give me the same command as was previously run. That's a rather long command so fortunately just by pressing the up arrow key I can repeat that. So let me rerun my program. This time let me enter what I hope is my body temperature. I think my body temperature today is 37 degrees. Let's have the program figure out what 37 degrees is in Fahrenheit. And it says that's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit.